الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد. Today is about al juz al rabi' the fourth juz of the Quran. The Hufaz, alhamdulillah, completed today the recitation of al juz al khamis, the fifth juz of the Quran, and tomorrow the first hafiz will inshallah start with the recitation of the sixth juz. So we're one juz ahead now of the days. In the fourth juz, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He speaks first of all about spending. Allah says, and these are the starting verses of the juz, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ That you cannot reach piety unless you spend from what is close to your hearts. Meaning sacrificing something that is very dear to you. This religion spread through sacrifice and it will continue to spread through sacrifices. If you look at the thousands of pounds that people have donated for this masjid. And this is all people's hard earned cash and money that they have given. It's a sacrifice that they have made. And if you think about us coming to this masjid, spending an hour and a half here, for Tarawi Salat. This is a sacrifice of our time that we are making. Why? For Allah. For this deen. And our children, our young ones will inshallah learn from us that this is what our elders used to do. And they will carry this on just like we learn from our elders. And we are continuing this practice. So Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says that لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا This tunfiqu is about spending. Spending money. Financial worship. Financial worship, when you give in the path of Allah what is dear to you, close to you, then that is when you will be able to gain piety. There are some stories of Sahaba Ikram, but time does not allow. Also in this juz, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala speaks about the first house that was constructed for the worship of Himself. Allah says, Inna awwala baytin nas, that the first house to be constructed for the worship of Allah was the Kaaba, was that house which is in Bakka. We call it Makkah, that's the name, but it also was referred to as Bakka because it was able to fight back itself without its residents playing a role itself. Makkah Mukarrama was able to fight back any enemies. So we've all heard the story of Abraha in Surat Fil, the elephant. When Abraha came and marched to demolish the Kaaba, all the people were scared and they left this for Allah to protect, the Kaaba and Makkah for Allah to protect. And they went up into the hills. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He protected the Kaaba. He sent Qayran Ababil, that such small, small birds in their beaks were small, tiny pebbles. And they were what you might refer to as chemical weapons. That they were dropped and soon as they used to fall on someone's body, then that, that part of the skin used to all slowly burn away. And that's how they all died. So Allah protected. The people of Makkah did not do anything. So this is why one of the names that, was, that, that Makkah was referred to was Bakkah. And this is referred to in the Quran al Karim. bi Bakkata, The house which is in Bakkah. Now, why do we call the Kaaba Kaaba? Because Kaab means slightly raised from the level of whatever it's on. So, <coughs> for example, our uncle, we call this Kaab. Why? Because we have one level of the feet going down and then it's slightly raised outwards. That's why it's called Kaab. In the same way, the land there was level and then on, on that land, there was a slightly raised piece of rock. And that was to identify that this is the location of the Kaaba. Location of the Kaaba. Ka Kaaba and the area around is the Mataf. So you have the Kaaba, the area around is the Mataf. That's where we do Tawaf. Now Kaaba is in, the, in, the, in a valley and on both sides are hills and mountains. People who have been will know whenever it rains, then Kaaba, the Mataf, it, it gets flooded. There were even times where people did tawaf swimming because there was, they were not able to walk. They did tawaf swimming. 
And people enjoy that moment. I remember once when I was there, I was in the mataf, nice bright sunshine. And then dark clouds came. And I thought now everybody is going to leave tawaf and go inside the building. But soon as it started to rain and pour down, people started to come out into the mataf. The mataf, mataf was full of people. And it's, a, it's an enjoyment in itself to be doing tawaf, performing tawaf when there's heavy rainfall. Within a matter of minutes, that cloud disappeared, the sun came out again, and you couldn't tell, you wouldn't be able to tell that it was actually raining here. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala gave this house for our worship and to unite us all as well. Why? Because we all face towards this Kaaba in Salat. This is to unite the Muslims. That one Muslim is not facing that direction, another one this direction, but they stand shoulder to shoulder and they face one direction. Just like we are facing one direction when we are united on this, in the same way our hearts are united. We do not separate into and split into groups. Then the Jews continues with other subjects and towards the end of the Jews is about those people who are haram for us to marry. Etc. So Allah wa ta'ala mentions a list of women who are forbidden for us to marry. Usually it's because of blood relation or because we, the, the, our, our wife, our in-laws, because of that, or due to fosterage that somebody uh, breastfed us when we were, when we were of that age, etc. But the, in, in the mid, in, towards the end, in the last quarter, there is also a very important ruku' that we are very neglectful of. It's, it's a ruku' that's quite difficult to memorize as well and to retain because it's all about fractions. It's all fractions. Thuluth, ruba', sudus. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he explains the masail of inheritance. Not many of us act upon inheritance. Inheritance is a very important mas'ala. Because of us not acting upon inheritance, our children are losing away, are losing. We are losing out as well, financially. Because that wealth, it, it's not going to the rightful owners. Because it's not going to the rightful owners, that's why our children are losing, we are losing out on what we should inherit and become stronger financially. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, because there was a lot of abuse, that the strongest, fittest person in the family, as soon as somebody died, he would take everything. To please everybody, he might give them here 100 pound, 100 pound, that's it. It's been distributed. And he will keep hold of the rest, the thousands. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he put a stop to this. That now the portion is fixed and who will inherit is also fixed. So nobody can argue now. Nobody can say, no, we can't give you, we can't give you. Allah has fixed this. Just like salat, four rakats is fixed. You can't pray zor, five rakats. You can't pray three rakats. You can't say, no, only zohar and asr is for the fajr is not for no. In the same way, just as salat is for rakat is for In the same way, who will inherit is fixed. It's for for us to act upon this. And how much, what portion they will inherit is also fixed. I remember when COVID started, then I, I, I touched on these topics from the members several times because many people were sadly uh, passing away. I mean, peace of people die all the time, but more so during COVID. And Alhamdulillah, many brothers, they took me to their house when somebody passed away, and I calculated for them the full hisab that this person will receive this much, this person will receive this much. They acted upon this. So uh, sometimes it's because of knowledge. We don't have the knowledge. Sometimes because in the family there's four people. If I say I want to apply inheritance, people might say I'm greedy, etc. I want the wealth. It's nothing about greedy. You're acting upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the conclusion of Al-Juz Al-Rabi'ah. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala keep us steadfast upon his deen. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala accept our fasts and accept qiyamul layl. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.